got to catch the driver's if he leaves no line. Me just a move out and the police is a spy. Them can't catch me and throw me steady with me eye. But, uh, I got an office with a lot of posters in me. I got an accountant just to keep you well of it. I go to parties sometimes and divorce. It's hard to leave when you can't find the door. When, uh, life's been good to me so far. Well, um, the Higher Ground Movement, this guy, Ivory Bruce, is based out of uh, Indianapolis, Chicago area. And, you know, we linked up through a mutual person. Um, and basically, he's a DJ, but this guy, he, he plays instruments and, you know, he's done the band thing also, vocalist too. But uh, he makes these uh, crazy rhythms, man. I mean, he just makes them, you know what I'm saying? He just throws them together and, and they, they become rhythms. And, uh, my thing is, I, I do the same thing, but it's with vocals, you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to link up with the right rhythm that he would have, with the right vocals that I would have, and maybe make a, a hit, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's that's what my goal is with him, and then, you know, of course, everybody would eat. And, uh, what do you think makes you different? Like, what, You know what I'm saying? Well, for one thing, I want... I mean, I hate to say I want to do this because everybody says that. My thing is I'm going to do this. I'm doing this. I've been doing this for well over 20 years. You know what I'm saying? First time I got on stage in front of a packed house, I was 10 years old. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, uh, I ain't my shy. And my style is, is different. I think more unique per se than any other artist because like, uh, you know, I ain't really reggae. You know what I'm saying? I, I think the patois thing because it enables me vocally to do things that uh, someone who would be saying singing in you know the, the king's English you know this and thou and the would basically you'd have to say it in that phrase and by in the patois you know what I mean it, it enables you to do things vocally on musical tracks that you couldn't really do you know what I mean singing singing things you know so it just I basically just uh, feel like there's a market for that you know I'm just hearing the stuff that I hear on the radios and things. I mean, not to knock nobody, you know, garbage, but uh, <laughs> I feel like, you know, I mean, and, and everything is biting off everybody else, right. you know what I mean? I mean, how you gonna invent sex? Come on, man. <laughs> I ain't calling no names or nothing. And this auto-tone thing, man, it's like, uh, you know, if, if, if you really knew how to sing, you wouldn't have to use an auto-tone. That's my motto, but I mean, I know it enhances and everybody likes it. You know, giving people what they want, you know what I'm saying? But come on, man. It just makes everybody sound uniform, then the same is what it does. And if that's what society wants, then um, they can't get that from Tone Jack. <laughs> I'm coming in with that totally different style, you know? <laughs> Serious. You got a lot you got a lot of soul in your style too. I know you had a God bless the child and, and just your singing is 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 more soulful. So it's it's not like you're only concentrated on reggae. I mean what Talk about that a little bit more? Or? Well, basically, that's because I think, you know, of my age, you know what I'm right. saying? I was born in 64, man, you know, so it's like, I came up around listening to all of that, you know what I'm saying? It was so, uh, rap was something that they, they just didn't play in the house. You know, that was like a young people thing. You had to hear that in the street. You had to go out in the street to hear rap because that's where it was. So, if you didn't really kick it in the street a lot, you know, then you were stuck in the house, you know, a lot of times with the older folks, and that's what they play. And like, you know, when I was coming up, you know, I was kind of like one of them kids that was marked for getting in trouble. So they made me stay in the house a lot, you know what I'm saying? So this is what they were playing. But eventually I got out there in the streets and you know, heard that rap. But uh, I grew up in New York, and um, it's just a, a mega gumbo bowl of all kind of music and influences, you know what I mean? Uh, different cultural backgrounds and diversities. So, you know, all types of music I've been exposed to. You know I mean? I, I like the Eagles, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, life's been good to me, you know what I mean? So, uh, it's just, you know, it's just about forwarding, man, with creativity and, and something different, something unique. You know? How'd you get the link? How'd you get the link up with reggae music? I mean, what, what, what got you into that, man? Uh, I guess the first time I heard that, music it was in New York, you know, and uh, around the house, you know what I'm saying, they used to have uh, a lot of records, and I heard some Bob Marley, and that was kind of like the first time I heard it, and 
then, you know, uh, eventually traveling, I kind of seeked out to hear that, that type, because it was a different type of music. So when I go somewhere, I'd be like, let me see if I hear some of that again. And I'd hear some of that again. And whenever I heard it, you know, it was around the dreads or, you know, Jamaicans, you know what I mean, West Indian people. So we just kind of, you know, blended because I like the music and they play the music. So we just linked up and, you know, next thing you know, it's reggae was one of my number one musics. But I mean, I, I can't say, and this is going to sound weird, but I can't say that reggae is my favorite music in the whole world. I can't say that because I have music, the genre is so wide. You know, I love jazz, I love R&B, um, I like some good, good hip hop, you know what I mean? I like some good rock, you know, uh, you know hell, I'll listen to a little country, if it's good. <laughs> you know, but um, reggae is definitely a love, you know, definitely a hard fit, you know, thing because you feel reggae more so than this is what you feel. Now, when you were a young buck coming up in Brooklyn, or Bronx. was it the Bronx, Bronx, excuse me, pardon me, the Bronx, did you get any opposition from the dreads, though, being an American kid trying to kick their style? Did they, did they find, were they intimidated by you, or did they did they scoff you or laugh at you, or? Well, back then, at that age, you know, I wasn't dread, and um, I wasn't really trying to, to, to kick any style. You know, I was just trying to grow up in New York. But it was just being around them, you know what I'm saying? And, and they didn't really know me, per se, you know what I'm saying? I was just around, you know, their areas, their markets, and things like that, and this is what they playing, you know? So just being around those venues, hearing that. You know what I mean? So that's basically how that went.